And welcome everybody. Uh, I am Cook's War Strategy Gaming, and we are going to do uh, our first episode of Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, the U.S. or American campaign on the hard difficulty. So, Age of Sail, new game by the makers of, or newer game, it's been out I think on early access for over a year now. Um, I think the official release, though, was this past month or last month. Um, by the same makers of Ultimate General, um, who think they've been in the news. I think it's Game Labs. I think they were just bought out by someone, too. I don't know the details. Sorry, I'm not um, up to speed exactly on the news of the Game Lab situation. But um, regardless, we are going to play the... American campaign. Don't tread on me. Blood, sweat, and tears are the price of freedom. I learned this in Scotland. My family rebelled against the English tyrants. My father was killed in the fighting. They served them. All right, we are going to. You get some options here when you start the campaign um, that will give you certain bonuses. Um, towards the end of this, you get to choose the difficulty. Uh, I think I like to choose not survival, not uh, luck. Yes, you have a chance. You have an increased chance of su success when sending your ships into side missions, plus 10% uh, success chance. I sneaked We're through the heavily guarded town and boarded a ship as a stowaway. Now the sea is my home. Here I have found freedom, adventure. In recognition of my skills, I became captain at just 21 years of age. I am proud of my ship, but some of the crew resented my promotion. Unfortunately, he was from a wealthy family, and they were determined to see me ruined. Again, I ran, once more fleeing the tyranny of unjust men, to a land of opportunity, to a country where a man can be free, America. Choose your story continues. I worked as a carpenter and learned how to craft ship's hull. Repair cost. Um, I like, I think, better sale purchase prices in the Admiralty plus 5% on sale minus 5. I think we'll go with that one. Oh, wait. No, I think I want the reputation point. Uh, plus one reputation per battle. We're actually going to do that one. I purchased a farm and I prospered. I purchased a farm and prospered. England, the old tyrant, refuses to release her grasp on this land. The British control the major ports and cities, but the people yearn to be free. The Continental Navy will need cap this time. I will not run. Give me liberty. Give me death. With my political connections, I have secured a command where my experience will be useful. All right, choose how your story continues, making grand speeches. That gives benefit to hiring veteran costs, plus five casualties, replenish. Or my strength is the ability to plan and organize, plus I think we'll go with hiring. I don't know which one I like better. Minus 5% hiring veteran costs. Making grand yeah, speeches. let's do minus five percent hiring costs. I don't really like any three of those options. To the be British honest. already control most of the major ports in the region, but now is the time to change the course of the war. The situation at sea is as follows. So uh, we will go. The Great Britain will send her main battle fleet to subdue the. Colonial Rebellion. That gives uh, C difficulty set to hard. Enemy strength plus 20%. Rewards minus 10%. Great Britain will send her main battle fleet to subdue the Colonial Rebellion. Our spies report about the British expeditionary forces suggest. And then Great Britain will utilize all available resources towards subduing the Colonial Rebellion. Land difficulty will Great be hard. Great Britain will utilize all available resources towards subduing the colonial rebellion. 
Victory, glory, and a great future lay ahead. All right, we'll just leave. We'll leave the John Paul Jones portrait, and I'm actually going to. Uh, we can't increase anything yet, but um, we're going to leave adaptation off. The adaptation system continuously scales the AI force up or down according to the player's force. Um, we'll begin. Sailing for two weeks, we have reached the shores of home. Our voyage was quiet and calm. Our French friends even provided us with an escort by sailing under a false flag. Good lord. Look at those ships. It looks like half the British fleet is upon us. It is impossible to win this fight. We cannot win this ba battle engagement, so we must turn back and try to outrun them. There is a small landing to the south that we can use to supply our forces. So this is the area we need to retreat to. We must deal with the British patrol to reach our new objective. Alright, so let's pause this really quick. As you can see, we will um we are already upon the Alderney, which is a ship we want to actually try to take. And I think a a viewer by the name of another video by Nick Ryder suggested that part of the American campaign um is to try to capture as many ships as you possibly can without getting yourself destroyed. Um, so thank you for that um, bit of information that we are going to try and use in our campaign. Now, I think we'll try to take the Alderney. I don't think we will be able to take the Oakwood or the Ursa. Although I think we could take them on. Maybe. No, I think here's the plan. We'll just we'll try to take the Alderney quickly. And then skedaddle. Away from the rest of the British fleet. So we'll right, uh, right clicking on the enemy ship. We target them. We're going to use a round shot to start with. Oh, they're going after the Earlston. We also want to, since we want to board the Alderney, we want to use our grappling hooks and board and try to match their speed. We're going to use round shot to start and then switch to grape shot. I have to speed up a little bit more. Still, we want to get some shots off. There we go. So the grape shot will kill soldiers, make it easier for us to board. Let's try to get in a little bit closer. Don't want to ram them. There, you can see the grappling hooks now. We'll try to slow down. Now you can see the firing away. No, we don't want to sink the Alderney. All 
Alright, we're boarding them now. So you can see their troop count going lower. Lieutenant Fife is wounded in the in the melee. Let's drop anchor. Are we boarded? Did we board them? Can he not? Can we not board them because fight? Why aren't they boarding him? They should be boarding that, that ship. Stop firing, stop firing. Alright, there we go, there we go. Usually it um usually you're just able to take the ship. Alright, now let's skedaddle. Cause we got the other two ships upon us. We got the ship we wanted to capture really quickly, now we can get out. Cause we cannot lose the Earlston. We're going to keep the vengeance a little bit slower to keep in front of. We'll target the Oakwood. But the vengeance will kind of block the, the retreat here. Got the speed up too. If we had more men, it'd be not, uh, it's very tempting to go after the Oakwood. I mean, I think we can knock out the Oakwood if we really tried. I don't want to risk it. I think it's too risky. They still have the Ursa right behind them. So you can see the speed, we're at 11.4 knots on the Alderney. The Vengeance can even go faster, but we're at 75% um, speed. I don't want to take, take too much damage on the vent. Where's the Earlston? God, they're so far behind. So I might actually have to turn around Turn the vengeance around a little bit because we don't want the two British ships to tag team on the Earlston. The Alderney looks like it'll, it's fast enough to get away. And I'm trying to get the Oakwood to maybe chase us a little bit. And the Oakwood's a pretty fast ship. Oh my gosh, Earlson was in at full sail. What a mistake. I thought I set it to full sail. You can see the, uh, the two British ships Trying to take uh, shots at the Earlston. Don't want to lose the vengeance, that's for sure. Now the Earlston can take some shots, but they have no cannon of their own. It's just a troop transport ship. 
All right, the vengeance is taking on a lot of damage now. Our advantage now here is that the Oakwood needs to turn around with the wind. All right, I think we I think we need to get the vengeance out of here, and then the Earlston should be able to make it to safety. Still want the vengeance to kind of draw off fire from the Oakwood. Oakwood's taking on some damage too. The Ursa looks like they're going right after the Earlston. So the Alderney gets away, which is our captured ship. Again, hanging back the Vengeance here to help uh, the Earlston get away. Running at a snail's pace of a 6.9. Let's see if we can get the 7. Morale's at 60%. Morale's at 44% at the Vengeance, so... I think we just... Let's go. Stop playing games there. Earlston can survive. They'll make it back. So I almost fumbled that one because I forgot the Earlston was not at full sails. Vengeance should get away. Earlston's close to the escape zone. Oakwood's going to try to cut the Earlston off, but it's... They're not going to be able to. Oh, had to get some last, the last say in there, didn't you? All right, so victory. Uh, fleet casualties and losses. We lost 27. Captured one ship, though. Alright, so the first... That's the first scenario in the American campaign. We're going to do the second scenario um, in this episode. Um, and take a look, at, too, at the recruitment screen. We were able to del deliver... The required weapons to resupply our army in Boston. General Washington was pleased with the operation. With our weapons and pay, we will form the 1st Continental Navy Marine Regiment by recruiting, arming, and training volunteers very quickly. The battle is defensive in nature and can be good experience for them. All right, so anything... Uh, captured ships, you have the option to... Sell to the Admiralty, and you gain three. Um, you gain three reputation points, and reputation points are almost valuable, if not more valuable than gold. Um, in this game, um, you can purchase and add it to your fleet for a cost of six. And actually, the one thing I've noticed too is. In the beginning of the game, you don't have a lot of access to cannon. And if we add the Alderney to the fleet, we can also do more side missions, which will, um, which I don't think in this episode we'll get to. But side missions can add a lot of more cash to our fleet. I think I'm actually going to add this to our fleet. So the Vengeance needs a crew. We need to repair it first for 324. Alderney also needs to be re um, um, repaired. Um, also, if you are joining the stream or, or come across this video, the first to leave a comment to this video gets to rename the HMS Alderney. So please... 
oblige um, if you so choose. Um, every ship needs to... I mean, we want optimal men here. Now, a lot of times if you go max, you might actually make your ship too heavy. Or we'll keep it at optimal. Uh, we also need the right equipment. I think we have Charlesville... M said, uh, model 1728 and bayonet in our, in our Admiralty. So we'll use that to upgrade our, um, upgrade our, our crew for the vengeance. And also I'm up to, if you want to rename the vengeance as well. So the first two people to comment on this video, we will rename the vengeance and the Alderney. So we added crews to the Alderney and Vengeance. Um, we can use an officer for the Vengeance. In reserve is Zephania Fife. Man, that's a name. We need to uh, bring back that name, Zephania. That would be a great name to bring back to modern times uh, you can see um, this if we assign the officer I think these are like boarding he would be um, in control of the boarding parties um, it tells you what this officer should have um, as far as his abilities uh, what we're looking for so he's better than we lock and we will Assign him back to the ship after he has recovered from his wounds. Our valiant lieutenant. Um, the Alderney does need a captain. It only has one officer. Um, that we can assign to it because it's a smaller ship. Is a 7th rate sloop. The Vengeance is a 7th rate brig. So we'll actually give it to... Maybe we should... Promote Fife. We'll actually give it to Wheelock. Wheelock gets the the Alderney. So 12 guns on the Alderney and 18 guns on the Vengeance. You can also see the total weight. So 238. You could probably we could probably have more men. On the vengeance, if we wanted, which might not be a bad idea. So you can see the weight went up to 146. We don't, we're not, we don't have uh, extra guns available. Oh, I thought I assigned Fife. Okay, there we go. Fife's, Fife's back on the vengeance. We can all let's check the Admiralty. This is what's in our harbor, the Vengeance and Alderney. Nothing else available to us. <coughs> we can recruit these officers, actually. Uh, McNally looks like someone that would be of use to us in the future. You can see we have no naval weapons. We have some land of weapons available in the armory, and we could buy long land. 722 model which is not I don't think is as good as the Charleville model 1728 you can see the ratings here for each weapon let us actually go to career and we gain one career point for victory in the last scenario the escape scenario I'm actually going to add it to reputation um, maybe. We can either add it to Admir Admiralty's assortment is increased. So, I think what that is, is it increases the, what's available to you. Because it might be good and beneficial in the American campaign to add a point to that because having 
the necessary guns to if, even if we purchase the new ship we have no cannon to board it so um although reputation points are important because we need more reputation points to keep those ships that we that we capture so we're actually going to add reputation is increased in the admiralty plus two reputation per battle so next one is plus three per battle so we're going to try that all right why don't we go to the map uh the battle of bunker hill will be starting soon the british fleet has moved to take control of the hill surrounding boston harbor and have started bombarding our position what is the best use of your talents in the coming battle you can form a regiment of Marines and join the battle at Bunker Hill or take command of our ships and help them escape before the British fleet takes control of Boston Harbor. Uh, we are actually going to take command of our ships and help them escape before the British fleet takes control of Boston Harbor. Um, so here is the... Okay, actually, this is the escape scenario. Um, Saturday, June 17, 1775, 5... Reputation points are available for this. Uh, 3,400 gold. On June 16th, British were planning to occupy the hills surrounding Boston. Colonel William Prescott led co colonial militiamen to the Charlestown Peninsula and built fortifications on top of Breed's Hill. On June 17th, British forces landed on Charlestown Peninsula. We must save our ship and pass through the British fleet to escape. You can see the map here. The British here um, blockading Boston Harbor. Our ships are assigned to escape. Alright, so we will... Assign the Vengeance and the Alderney and start the battle. So the Battle of Bunker Hill will start soon. The British Navy is positioned to support the Redcoats as they assault the fortifications on the hill. This is our chance to escape and save our fledgling fleet. We must save our ships by sailing them swiftly through the enemy pickets with objective of escaping area of battle as quickly and safely as possible. And then you can see in the distance there's a slight red. Um, that's the escape zone. Sail uh, your ship to the evacuation area and try to avoid contact with the British ships. All right, let's pause this really quick. Um, this scenario, although definitely winnable, it, it's kind of, kind of tricky because you have the turtle, the turtle ship, the Earlston, the very slow, um, ship that again, the Earlston must reach safe zone. So you have to get the Earlston to the safe zone to win this battle. Let's make sure we have our... Sales at max. Now, what I think is effective strategy is to you have the wind going southeast. So that's working against the British fleet. But for us to get away, if if I go northeast, we're working a little bit against the wind. Um, we're going to use the Vengeance and Alderney as a distraction. We're going to go straight at the British fleet. Kind of draw them off away from the Earlston as long as we can without getting them destroyed in the process. So that's the goal here um, is not to get destroyed and using the Vengeance and Alderney to um, distract the, Brit the main British fleet. So you can see we need full sail, so speed is important here. You can see their, sh their uh, ship, the HMS Falcon, comes into the harbor and is going to come straight at the Vengeance. Um, 
Well, actually, the Earlson will kind of go with the win and maintain uh, seven knot speed here. And then we'll probably, then we'll start heading a little bit northeast away from the British fleet. Um, we are not going to screw around with trying to capture the Falcon. We're, again, just going to try to draw fire away from the Falcon. And it's some good shots there. Uh, I might actually go try to go straight here with the Vengeance. Um, Alderney now engaged with the Falcon. Actually, let's start moving the Earlston away. There's still, let's see, speed starting to tick down a little bit. We can stay at 7. 6.9. That's good enough, I think. Alright. Let's switch over. The Vengeance is a fast ship, though. But they're going to come to blows with the Glasgow. So the Glasgow and Symmetry might be a little bit tough on, on the Vengeance. Vengeance does some damage, though, to the Glasgow. Might slow the Vengeance down a little bit. Alderney is a weaker ship, so we don't want to really engage too much with the British ships. Got to be careful with the Vengeance here, though. We don't want her to get destroyed. That's our best ship right now. Ooh, they took some shots on the Earlston. Morale's still at 92, so that's good. Vengeance could probably do some real damage to the Spitfire if it wants. That lively though, we want that, that ship's dangerous. We gotta stay away from them. Alderney's gotta be careful too. I wonder if I should bring back the Vengeance a little bit. I don't know if he's gotten too far away. Morale's at 64. Morale's good on the Alderney so far. Uh, Earlston still taking some shots. All right, we're we're going. We're heading against the wind. Maybe let's use the wind again. Yes, I'm going to bring back the Vengeance a little bit here. Alright, so the Falcon is trying to chase down the Earlston now. So right back at 7.3 knots on the Earlston. So I wonder if we can bring the Vengeance back a little bit they can distract the Falcon. Although now the Vengeance will be going against the wind. Looks like the Lively is going to try to cut off the Earlston. We're gonna catch up to the vengeance so vengeance is still doing okay but morale's at 51 percent the falcon draws off the earlson so that's good all right the rest of that fleet, the only it looks like the main ship we got to worry about now is the lively it this way I think all right 
they're probably gonna open fire real soon. Alright, not bad. Okay, 48% morale. Now we're just gonna try to get the Earlson past the lively in one condition. Uh oh, Alderney, don't get destroyed. Sure, where are those other British ships? Okay, they gave up. Oh, nope, Falcon's back. Actually, if the Lively disengages, we could take the Falcon. We could take the Falcon. But not... I'm not going to chance it with the lively nearby. I would really like to take the Falcon. Uh oh. Can't let the Falcon take, uh, Take out the Earlston. Right, the Lively looks like it's coming back around. Let's get the Alderney out of here, I think. Uh oh. Uh oh, they got the Lively and the Earlston and the Falcon on both sides of the Earlston. We need to get the vengeance. To draw off the Falcon. Man, they're hitting the Earlston. Alright. I think the Vengeance can draw off the Falcon now. Lively. Alright, come on. You're almost there, Earlston. Let's make it. Morale's at 32%. Alright, Alderney will get away. So HMS Alderney has retreated. I think uh, we will get away from the British blockade. Oh, come on. Don't don't lose it at the very end there. All right. Vengeance has retreated. Earlston will in about T minus 10, 9, 8, 7. All right. Get out of there before you. All right. All right, so that counts as a victory, the escape. Goals all must be fulfilled. Save the Earlston. Did some damage to the Falcon. Fleet casualties and losses. We lost 61 crew, though. But we did not lose any ships. We didn't do any damage to the British, though. All right. So the escape um, is successful. We are awarded the Andrew Doria. And our vengeance needs repairs. 
the Alderney needs repairs and the, Al um, the Earlston does as well. We have 15,000 in gold. We gained some reputation. It's at 18. Um, again, if anyone wants to leave a comment on the video, first come, first serve, we can rename all these ships. We need a name uh, starting with the Alderney, the HMS Alderney. Already available, so that's a lot cheaper and it doesn't cost us any reputation points. So, and it's a better weapon, so might as well use the Charleville model 1728. All right, so we have a, a militia unit, we need an officer, it's so probably McNally would be the best recruit. He has good strength and fighting skill. Yeah, and he, out, he outclasses these other officers, except for the adult Theophilus Theophilus Holmes, who is a little bit smarter than McNally. You would think I would be okay with American names, but these are not your modern American names. All right, McNally gets the command of the colonial troops. Let's do a, a smaller militia unit. Let's see. Let's look, we got to watch our funds. We got 12,000. Is this what we want to do? Andrew Doria, oh, there we got the two seventh seventh rate brigs and the HMS Alderney with their smaller guns. Actually let's we want to increase the number we're gonna go to optimal crew size on the Andrew Doria. That's going to cost us a rep point. That's okay. Um, let's see. I can look at. I want to get. I want to do some of these simple research. Some of these re, uh, cheap research points. Um, ship speed and acceleration. So copper plate sheeting. We can research. It only cost us a little bit. Heavyweight kit for structure repair. Reusable armor and hit point restore. Sail repair kit includes everything you need for urgent sail repairs while at sea. 
So it's only 900 gold and one rep point. So it costs more money though to even to attach them to your ships. So we might not actually use those. Let's take a look at the campaign map. Um, so we we scored a victory on the escape, and there's no other battles to do on the first can uh, on the first scenario. So we'll end the chapter. Hardened steel. We stood together in our darkest isle, unwilling to retreat until our last charge of powder had been expended. British troops have great stockpiles of ammunition, but force of arms will not suffice to win this war when men are determined to have liberty or have death. Congress has approved a series of offensive operations on land and sea to determine or to demonstrate our resolve to the British and their king. We have much to do. All right, so in this chapter, which November 1775, there's a couple, letter of Mark, uh, meal for patriots. Those are the two main uh, battle scenarios. Then there are these side missions. Now, then you have the European Herald, the Europe Herald. See what the European Herald has to say. Here in Paris, we hear excellent reports from our correspondent in Boston that strongly suggest that British colonists are unlikely to make peace with the perfidious Albion anytime soon. After the Boston Massacre, the battles against local militia at Lexington and Concord, and especially after the battle between British and American forces on Bunker Hill outside Boston, the citizens of Boston appear to prefer death to servitude. In particular, men like Captain John Paul Jones exemplify our contempt of British authority by openly challenging their vaunted supremacy of the waves. We, the people of France, owe it to these brave men to stand behind them and provide what support we can. It is imperative we call upon our majesty louis the 16th to aid these men men like captain john paul jones of the u.s navy who openly challenged british britain's alleged supremacy of the waves rise people of france support america support their liberty support their equality support their brotherhood um so back to these side missions now to do the side missions, you have to assign ships from your fleet. But to finish the side mission, and it's not an actual battle that you do. You just do the side missions, and then you have to do one of the battle scenarios. So what you're actually going to do is take ships away from your fleet to do side missions. So I guess, let's see, letter or mark. Maybe we can do this one last mission before we call the episode over just to demonstrate the side mission and how it works since the very first day of the revolutionary war you have found yourself without guns and especially without gunpowder the southern states produce hundreds of tons of the best cotton and tobacco in the world but gunpowder production is almost non-existent therefore we must steal or buy what we need and it is much cheaper to steal than to buy especially when you are paying the bill with royalist blood. According to the report, there's a small vessel carrying a large amount of gunpowder. She might not even be armed. She should be easy prize to take. Um, another thing, you have the option to follow orders, which gives you um, a certain amount of money and reputation. Um, in the hard mode, it's the only option available. In other easier modes, it gives you the option to choose um, something more aggressive that gives you better um, money and rewards. Let's take a look at the map. There's three, let me see, three British vessels. I 
Actually, let's. There's the meal for patriots. There's two. Hmm. Maybe we want to do meal for patriots first. The invasion of Quebec was the first major military initiative of the newly formed Continental Army. Our brave troops, led by Richard Montgomery, Philip Schuler, and Benedict Arnold, had to cross 200 miles of wilderness to reach the Quebec. Uh, to reach Quebec before they could even begin fighting to free the city from Britain. Uh, unfortunately, the army suffered heavy casualties and advances are made very slowly because they are almost no supplies and must forge for everything. Winter is coming. I was ordered to escort a large merchant vessel loaded with food, warm clothes, and gunpowder to resupply the column. These supplies are hard to come by and must arrive on time and intact. So I'm thinking I want to do Meal for Patriots first. There's only two British vessels. And that will allow me to actually... We're going to do a naval patrol. British merchant vessels are frequently spotted in this area. The British believe that these waters are safe, so escort vessels are rare. Alright. So, these side missions, you assign ships from your fleet. And it gives you a success percent chance. So, we can, we can keep our two... Actually... Maybe if we sign the Earlston and the Alderney, 72% chance of success. That's still pretty good. And I'm just taking the... The... The anchor around the neck of our... Our two better ships. The Vengeance and the... The Vengeance and the... The Andrew Doria, those are our two best ships. Um, they, they'll be freed up to take on the two, um, two British vessels here. So, But before we do that, we have to assign the ships first to the side mission. So we're going to do Earlston and Alderney. 72% chance of success. We'll hit start. Okay, so that's in progress. Now we have to play out this scenario um to finish the side mission so you can see on naval patrol on naval patrol vengeance and andrew doria although it would be nice to have that even the alderney even though it's a a, a weaker ship So let's begin. Um, we are transporting the Minerva, but the Minerva, I think, has guns. The wind was very light yesterday afternoon. The captain of the Minerva and I thought it advisable to move offshore to find a better tack to move northeast as ordered. It was nearly dark when the Minerva spotted British ships closing fast. We could not see the British as the sails of the larger merchantman had obscured their approach. Action, action stations. We must protect the merchant vessel and its vital cargo at all costs. Fortunately, she is the she is an India man and can defend herself if need be. We must hold our own until night falls. All right, so the plan will be... We, I want to take the HMS Catherine. And I think I can do it with the Minerva. She has 30 guns. Now the Manu the Catherine outclasses our Vengeance and Andrew. But 
the Vengeance and Andrew can take out the Cruiser. And they could even take out the Sherwood together. Now, that, of course, is... With the Catherine not getting involved, so I think we're I think the, I think to take the Catherine we have to focus on capturing the Catherine. That means taking out the cruiser and taking out the Sherwood. You can use the Minerva as bait. We know they're going to come after the Minerva. The Minerva is going uh, even at max sail and with the wind behind her back. Going six knots. So we're going to target the cruiser. So I want to sink the cruiser. I want to get rid of it. And then maybe if the Catherine gets involved, we'll, we'll switch to a different shot. We want to slow the Catherine down. We want to take the Catherine. So the cruiser which is nice, is um, coming at full speed. So as she gets farther away from the protection of the Catherine, it'll be easier for us to take her out quickly. Let's get the Minerva to fire. I'm going to actually slow the Minerva down. Andrew Doria is going to get on the other side of Cruiser. Also, if we try capturing the Cruiser, we're, we're going to split our forces up and not have enough boarding uh, party to take the Catherine so we'll just we're just going to dispense with the cruiser so let's keep the Minerva over here Minerva lost three men in that fighting with the cruiser, so and that's what I think that's what I wonder if the cruiser is at uh, using grape shot to take out soldiers All right, we really need to sink the cruiser that for a second okay yeah let's get the maneuver to kind of swing around take shot more shots at the cruiser same with the andrew doria vengeance is trying to turn around a little bit 
right, so the crews are really taking some shots now. Uh, the Vengeance is getting herself into a little bit of trouble, I think. I just want to finish off the cruiser. Now this might get a little tricky here now with the Sherwood and Catherine. So we want to actually slow down the Catherine. I kind of want to disengage a little bit and then come back around. If we can disable the Catherine and then take on the Sherwood. All right, so it looks like the, cru the cruiser's done. All right, let's get the Vengeance back over. Let's see, morale's at 90 on the Vengeance, 99 on the Andrew Doria. Uh, let's go around this way. Now we got to be careful. We still have to protect the Minerva. All right, leave the leave them alone. Don't even bother. There we go. So I got I switched to chain shot. I want to slow the Catherine down. I want to disable it. If we can. Ah, uh, Andradoria. Let's slow the speed down here. We gotta get the vengeance back. Alright, Andrew Doria in range. Oh no. Turned around too fast. Eleven point eight on the vengeance. All right, there we go. My Minerva's at eighty four morale. Andrew Doria has got to get closer to the Catherine. The Sherwood now is get engaging the Minerva. All right, this is not going as I had hoped. They're at 69%. We need to... They're going against the wind now, so... The British positioned themselves a little bit better than I was able to. Maybe, maybe we need to just take out the Sherwood. So, Andrew Doria is able to hit the Catherine. Again, we're trying to slow her down. We also have to deal with the Sherwood. They must be, they have to be using great because the, every shot they fire at the Minerva, they kill more and more sailors
Vengeance took some damage. Switch the grape on the Andradoria. We're going to try to kill their sailors on that ship. We don't have enough men to take the Catherine right now. Oh, you turned too fast. All right, so we're killing some sailors now on the Catherine. I just want to kind of match the speed of the Catherine. So Andrew Doria is just sitting there slowly now. 72% morale. Morale's at 34 though on the Minerva. We're going to have to be careful that they don't surrender. Avengers just took a bunch of shots. Minerva. Get, morale's getting way too low for Minerva. We're at the edge of the battle map. They gain morale back, that's good. Although the vengeance is looking pretty sh shaky. to the Andrew Doria. Almost have to turn around here. All right, the captain still has 147 men. We need to get it a lot lower than that. See if the Andrew Doria, come on, keep firing. The 
lost a gun on the vengeance. Alright, so they're just, like stuck on the edge of the map. Kill enough sailors though on the Catherine. Andrew Doria is wavering though. We're going to lose the Andrew Doria. Proved. So we're going to run into the Minerva. Alright, so this plan to take the Catherine is not looking good. Although, they're down to 123. Unfortunately, the Sherwood is just... I haven't done much damage to them. And we're way away, we're very far away from the turn around the Minerva. We're very far away from the exit zone. I... There we go. Now we got all three. We still have to, even if we get Catherine very low on manpower, we're going to have to deal with the Sherwood, although I think we can just gang up on the Sherwood after ganging up on the Catherine. Just gotta make sure the Vengeance doesn't start getting pounded by the Sherwood. Should probably slow down. They might, they might try to board the Minerva, though. Oh, Catherine's wavering. That's what we like to see. Anchor, anchor, anchor. Oh, they gain morale back. Not before the Minerva hits him again. Oh, they're grappling. Shit. They're going to take the Minerva. Grapple. Oh, can we not grapple with the Catherine? We should be able to grapple with them. Oh no, there we go. Disengage, disengage. This is going to be very hard fought for the Catherine. All right. Minerva got out of it. They're not grappled anymore. But now, Andrew Doria is engaged with the Catherine.
Here comes the Sherwood, though. We can just destroy the Sherwood sails. We might be able to get away. Are they boarding? Looks like we're almost ready to board. Nope, they got away. Catherine got away. See, morale on the Doria is 43. Their condition is 6%. That's not good. I really need the Vengeance to try to take the Catherine now, I think. If the Minerva can just destroy the Sherwood sails, they, they'll be able to get away. We'll use the Andrew Doria to keep pounding the Catherine. Ah, uh, they're in our way though. Alright, we don't run in. You can see the Sherwood's uh, sails getting ripped to shreds. That works. All right, this works. We're gonna catch up to the Catherine. This is this might work. This might actually work. Oh, condition. Andrew Dory is gonna sink. Or the morale of the men is falling. Get out of there. Alright, Andrew, Andrew Doria's out. For now. And then, let's see. Vengeance needs to catch up to the Catherine and... And grapple with them and board them. Minerva needs to dis disable the Sherwood. Slow down, slow down. The vengeance. Ah, the vengeance might get sunk. The Sherwood is just is right there to defend it. I don't know about this. They're boarding. They're boarding. Can they win? Are they too uh Destroyed. Oh, we need to put him. All right, come on, come on, come on. They're going to take the Catherine. I right, disengage. All right, now get out. Get out of here. Get out, get out, get out. Go, 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 go. Catherine, get out. Are they going to be too weak? Does the Sherwood have enough sail? Oh, 
while. They might actually, they might, this might work, although the Sherwood is too fast. Let's see, they're going six knots. The Sherwood looks like it's gaining. All right, Doria can come back. Forty crew on the Vengeance, sixteen guns. Sure, it still has one hundred forty-eight men on there. It's going to take a while to get to the to, to, to the the edge of the map, the exit zone. It looks like we're actually uh, are able to run away. Andrew Doria is coming back just in case Minerva needs our assistance. I think we're I think we're good. Try to match. We'll match the Minerva speed. Save the Minerva. Uh, yeah, we used it to help us capture the Catherine and get more than half its crew killed. Well, great, great job. Good work. I wish there was a faster speed. Five point nine six. Yeah, we're get, we're uh, dis distancing ourselves from the Sherwood, so we should be able to finish this one. Vengeance is almost out of harm's way. So that was very close. Closer than... All right, so Vengeance has re uh, escaped or retreated. Actually, the edge map is this way, or the exit point is this way. Let's see, um, see the damage done. Condition of ship pump is good. So Minerva was taking a lot of hits, but again, I think they were definitely using grape shot because to lose almost 70 men um, and suffer no real damage to the ship, the AI must have been using grape. And even... Uh, Andrew Doria is not too bad. Catherine, 97% uh, hull is still intact, so. 
Sales at 88%. So off into the sunset. Oh, Jesus. We're still that far away. Well, I hope... Um, you know, we'll do... We'll... we'll We'll show the um, results of the side mission, um, but that will be the end of the episode. So if you want to stick around for the side mission, please do. And we'll kind of we'll take a quick look at the ship repairs, but um, we will do another episode for the next. Um, scenario. Line of sight mode. Line of sight mode. Visualiz visualization of line of sight. Almost there. Okay, it's cool. You can see the the Catherine off to the distance. Here are the sailors of the Minerva now. They used us as bait. And then they used our cannons. I feel so violated and used. They almost captured us. That John Paul Jones, he's a, a recluse. Oh, um, so it shows you how much crew is assigned to which task. Almost there. The anticipation of it all. Almost there. Come on. You can do it. Oh, it's like a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Victory. So fleet strength. And we had three ships. So there are three ships. They had 66 guns. So the, I guess the Minerva ships, um, their guns didn't count maybe in that. Fleet casualties and losses. One sunk, one captured. Crew, um, we still killed 226 of their crew. So efficiency, I don't know if this is how much the Minerva dished out. Or how much it took. I think how much it dished out. Yeah. Because the cruiser, yeah, they only did two um, damage there. Seven. Well, they were able to do seven. Uh, I'm guessing that is uh, people damage. Officers promoted. Way to go, Fife and Cushing. Captured the HMS Catherine. And... Some other things. All right. A little sloppy, though. But we got the Catherine. That was our goal, was to capture the Catherine. Without, um, <laughs> without getting ourselves killed. All right. 
Got lots of ship repairs. I only have 10,000 in gold, though. 20 rep points, so. The reputation well deserved. Let's take care. Let's uh, repair um, these troops now. So, ooh, it's going to cost 15 to add to the fleet. It's a six rate. Cerebrus class Corvette. Uh, yeah, it's a much better ship. They have the nine pound Armstrong guns. I'm gonna, I want it. I want it. It is mine. Alright, so I have 8,000 gold. Who's going to captain the Catherine now? It looks like, um, Balthazar Bartolomeo is our best choice. What about Isaac, though? What about John Paul Jones? Should we assign him? Let's see, he's got a 53 willpower. What's John Paul Jones' willpower? 40. He's actually a better... All right. Bartolomeo, you get the Catherine. Our officer, our sub lieutenants. Looks like uh, Namaya Anthony. And another officer, Amias Ellis. Can we afford? Oh, we have a few soul. Not enough weapons. Oh, a crew of 200. We don't have enough. Why can't we combine them? Why can't they mix and match? I guess you can if we do it this way. Or no. So do we have to buy? Let's take a look at... Uh, Naval wet land weapons. Uh, we'll just understaff the Catherine for now. That's fine. We'll go 177. All right, so the Alderney and Earlson are in battle. So let's go to the map. Award. Oh, we get an award. Badge of Military Merit. By order of the Continental Congress, this medal is awarded to ordinary soldiers of the Continental Army who have distinguished themselves in the face of the enemy, placing their life at risk. It is men, maybe the Minerva's men at risk. It was men like 
this on whom our new nation shall be built. So there are ships available to us. Are there naval weapons available to us? No. Like I said, though, it's a weird thing. If I buy a ship, if I buy a ship, Um, I have, there's no naval, there's no cannon on that ship. So I am better off capturing the ship like the Catherine who already has the 28 guns and they're not for this stage in the game. Those, those nine pounders are pretty, are pretty good. Um, the six pounders reload pretty fast. Damage is, what's the damage? Damage is a five. The nine pounders, yeah, better damage. They reload a little bit slower though. Damage is seven. Range is 1,050 yards. Uh, range is only 950 on the six pounders. That's gonna cost two rep points. I right, used up a lot of red points though by keeping the Catherine. All right, that's it. Next stage. There is an unfinished battle in progress. Defeat. Wait a minute. I made I made a mistake, I think. <laughs> All right. I don't want to bore you any longer than I have to. Um, I do appreciate watching the first um, episode of the Age of Sail um, American campaign. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and until the next one, I do you know hit the like button if you liked it. Uh, leave a comment. Still, if you want to rename a ship, first come, first serve. First person to leave a comment to the video, um, I will rename um, the Alderney. I'll rename the Catherine. Um, I'll even rename some of the, the Vengeance or any of the other ships. Um, again, until next time, thank you very much.